All right, so um, how you feel? I'm here with Brad, man. So we just finna talk and just really get into it. You know, we had an interview before, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper this time and touch some different topics, some current events, and just let people get to know you because the music hot. So now we're just trying to let people get to know the person behind the music, you know, and move sure. forward from there. So how do you feel like your rap career is going so far? Like if you had to describe, how is it going? I feel like it's just, I don't know, man. It's just going steady for real. Like, shit, nigga just grinding every day. You know, it's going though, but you know, slowly but for surely. You feel me? Bad. Any improvements or changes that you done made since we last interviewed? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I done did a lot of shit. I done. Let me see. I purchased my own studio. I got that going. I got my own, my own camera equipment, so I'm getting into directing video. I'm finna do all that, so yeah, yeah. I'm doing my own, everything. I'm doing everything myself now, you feel me? So that's the change. Bet, that's how you do it. Have you changed, like, as far as the way that you approach making a song, or is everything still? See. No, I still go in that bitch and turn to a maniac and just go crazy. You <laughs> mean? Yeah. So, what, what's the song that you most proudest of right now, at this moment? I'm proudest song. I got so many of them bitches. Uh, or one that you listen to and it, it touch you, like it's, it's it's the one that you, that hit home with well, you. Well, I'm gonna keep it real, I'm gonna keep it real. I make so much music. So to the point like, well, I can get, I can make one song that day and be listening to that bit and make another song and won't even listen to that no more. So it like, it's always gonna be my recent, like something that probably ain't out yet or something, you feel me? Like, like that type shit. Uh, last time we talked, you had moved to Atlanta. You still in Atlanta? No, I ain't in Atlanta no more, man. Back in the city. That's what's up. Doing my thing. I'm out the way, though, outskirts, you know, but yeah. I just feel like I got some business. I got to handle the hill. I got to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so what do you feel is your biggest challenge that you done faced so far since you decided to rap? Your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge is everybody ain't your friend, everybody ain't your partner. You know what I'm saying? People will come around and try to fuck with you for what you got going on and whoop the whoop. But a lot of your love don't be real, so. What what keeps you going through that? When you run into that, what make you keep going when you run into stuff like that? She, the music, recording. Making music, shit, that's it. That's my outlet to everything. Is there any distractions right now that's kind of keeping your mind off the music? Hell no, I don't know. I don't know, I can't really say cause I ain't never lost my faith, none of it. I ain't never stopped, I ain't never, you feel me, so. Can't nothing distract me. Can't no female distract me. If I like, like I had, I had, I bet I had a situation where female text. She asked me. She said, "You choose between me and music." I'm going with music every time. I ain't, you can't. You feel me? Can't stop there. Speaking of that. How do you like your work environment as far as like when you're in the studio, do you like it just you? You like your partners with your females? How you like to record? Well, shit, I record all my music at home now, so it just be me. I be in that bitch in my drawers recording. <laughs> so you feel me like shit, straight Locked like that. Locked in. Locked in. You smoke? And I, I, look, I smoke a little weed. <laughs> Yeah. Dude. I don't smoke no tobacco though. Yeah, I stop that shit. I put that shit down and I'm proud of myself. Yeah, I stop that shit. That's real. So what what's your main goal, bro? Cause like you locked in. I know you love music, but outside of that, what's your what you trying to get to? 
that cheese. I want that paper. I got my mindset on a whole lot of, not other than just music, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I want to build an empire, a brand, like, not just music, like, real estate. I want to get into a, I want to be a club owner one day. I ain't thought about having, create my own football, you know, little league football team and letting them play nationally, you feel me, stuff like that. I want to do a lot of shit, so. Man. So what do you feel like if you if you could have it your way, you already got all the money you need, what would your day be like? You rich. What would you wake up and do? You can do whatever you want to do. I'm going to keep it real. I'm rich. I got everything I want. The only thing I want to do is wake up and change other people's life. You feel me? Because I feel like when God bless you, he blessing you to be a blessing to other people. So that's how I look at it. I, I think about giving back. I ain't got the money yet. And I think about what I'm going to do for this person, do for that person. And I ain't even got it yet. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Everybody don't think like that. I was going to ask you to touch on what you meant by change of the people, but you kind of already yeah. explained it to for touch sure. people live. Um, okay, so this will lead into this question. Would you still keep rapping if you found out today that you'll never really blow and become to a millionaire? Do you, would you still do it? Would you still have a passion for it or you'll move on to something else? I know I'm blow. I know I'm be a millionaire, so I can't even answer that question. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's real. That's real. All right. The, this set of questions, you know, you know, you open to answer however you want to. If you so, want to answer. Have you ever had any rap beef with anybody or beef period? Yeah, no. It, it, I would never let it get that far. I ain't finna, cause one thing about me, I ain't finna go back and forth with nobody or you say what you want to say about me, it is what it is. Because like, I ain't, I ain't in this to be in the streets. You feel what I'm saying? I mean this because I love making music. I love being an artist. So I ain't like a lot of niggas, they what what going on now is they making the rap game the streets. You feel what I'm saying? And I ain't in it for that. I love music. I've been doing this shit since I was little. So, you know, I'm a man, so you got down. It is what it is. You got a problem with me, that's your problem. I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm gonna see you. I still speak to you. I ain't got no problem with that. I don't, no, I don't do nothing like that. So speaking of that, you said you started rapping when you was little. Can you speak on like how you started, like how you got into it? Man, let me say, let me think, let me think. I ain't going to count my cousins. Like, music always been some, you know, in my family, like my older cousins rap. Like, so like me seeing them do it, me going over their house and they got the studio in their room and you know what I'm saying? I just took heed of it and I just kept it going. Man. So can you speak on like the violence in the city? Like recently for people that if somebody from a different state or somebody come across this, we had a mass, a major mass shooting in Birmingham not too long ago. Um, can you speak on why you think that kind of stuff is happening in the city and what we can do to improve from it? Social media. It's social media, it's the music, and it's the environment. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't change nobody unless you change yourself. You feel what I'm saying? So the day that everybody look in the mirror and ask themselves what they doing, then that'll be the day it become better. But I don't know, man. They too gone. Like, I don't know. Like, it's crazy. I, I, I don't know, bro. What you think they, what are they killing over? Is it money? Is it just social media beef? Is it gangs or like, what's the motive of it? I mean, shit, I feel like it's, 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 it's becoming a trend. It's, it's, it's a trend now. So it's, it's, I gotta portray this image. I gotta be this certain type of person to, and get the hoes and get, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I gotta be a crash out. Niggas ain't respect loyalty. Loyalty don't matter no more. Niggas ain't respecting loyalty. No. They respecting the money. Right. So they'll look at a nigga and look up to him just because he got money. 
Feel what I'm saying? So loyalty, it just ain't existing no more. So when you find some people that are loyal, you gotta keep them around you cause it's too much fake shit. Yeah. So knowing that with you moving back to the city, do that affect how you move in the city? Oh no, nah, hell no, nah, it don't it don't because you know you won't never catch me in them type of places and them type of crowds anyway. And I still do work in Atlanta, so I still be going back and forth and shit like that. But hell no, you know, I ain't, shit, I'm 30 minutes out. I ain't, you feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, So um, how do you feel about how the industry is right now with you leading into that, you know what I'm saying, and going in that direction? Like when I turn on the radio right now, all I hear is Sexy Red, Lotto, <laughs> like it's a lot of female artists when you turn on the radio right now. Like how you yeah. feel about the direction of the industry? I feel like, I mean, they doing their thing, but like, it's just, it's, it's becoming, it's becoming, it's, it's starting to become their world. Yeah, we just had a black female run for president. It's starting to become their world, you feel what I'm saying? So, like, if it's selling, it's selling. You got any desire to work with any other female artists that's in the industry? Shit, I wanna work with all of them. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you. <laughs> Speaking of that, how do you feel like about the dating scene right now? Like I don't know how old you are, but like I'm how 26. Do you, you 26. Everybody think I'm older than what I am. I'm 26. My birthday in January, I'm Aquarius. I'm 26. People think I'm old as hell. Like yeah, I get comments all the time. Boy, you old as hell. <laughs> Why you still rapping, bro? I'm 26. So, yeah. You just give out that mature Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, how you feel now about, like, if you in the dating scene, like, how females move and they, how they choose now versus how it was <laughs> back in the day? Man, these old, but I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Like, it's the sign that whatever affecting the niggas affecting the hoes too, cause like it's just the dang scene just fucked up. Like I said, it don't ain't no don't no loyalty exist no more. You feel what I'm saying? They ain't respecting the man. The man don't get respected no more. Right. Do you feel like social media right now is a gift or a curse to our generation? It could be both. Cause you can make you can you can you can you can live off social media like you can really go you can really make some money off social media and i feel like it's a gift and a curse but i feel like it's a curse because shit like look at this shit like everybody like tuned in look what it's doing to, to the people you feel what i'm saying like you can put anything on the internet and people gonna take it and run with it no matter if it's true or not so I try to I, I be on the internet and I but I try to stay away from it too. I be on that TikTok though. I be on that's what I be on. So yeah, yeah, I can follow me on TikTok too, Bread Boy O2. I be on now. But that Facebook and that Instagram. I be on Instagram, but that Facebook, I don't wanna even see nothing on it, cause every time you open it, it's something. I'm telling you. So I stay out there. You do some YouTube too, don't you? Yeah, I be YouTube and I do my little vlog and this shit like that. I feel like shit, we in the content world now. So it's, it, I'm going to put my face in front of you folks as much as I can. That's the reason, one reason we doing the interview. You feel what I'm saying? So that's it. That's, that's it. Like, and people fall in love. Like, people been falling in love with my personality, too. So once they fall in love with you, they going to support anything you do. You feel me? Everything. Did you vote? Yeah, hey, yeah, I went and voted, man. Yeah. I had to. Yeah. So, I'm going to ask you this. I ain't asking you who you vote for. That's your information or whatever. For what sure. does Trump being president, how was that going to affect your daily, everyday life, or does it? Look, it ain't. <laughs> We'd have been through how many presidents? It ain't. I mean, like, 
I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I don't, I don't got my hand out. So, like, it ain't even no offense to nobody or nothing like that. But it's just like, shit, at the end of the day, we can't go. Whatever going to happen, going to happen. You feel what I'm saying? So That's true. Uh, what music you listening to in your car right now? Like, what you bumping? Shit, me. Me. That real. Me. I ain't gonna care. I bought, I bought me every day. But nah, for real, we, we gonna talk about it. I listen to a lot of, I listen to a lot of underground artists, like, like artists that's counter, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the type of artists I listen to, you know, a lot of people don't know about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, I've been on that, oh, um, what I've been on? I've been on that Quando now, that Quando, Quando just dropped that, uh, uh, life goes on. I've been playing the hell out of that. I ain't gonna lie. And shit, a couple other shit, other yeah. different artists. I like pain music. I can't sit and listen to all that, that gangster shit all day. How did you feel when you found when you heard the news about the passing of the Atlanta uh, legend Rich Homie Quan? Oh man, you know that's my favorite rapper, man. Like this shit, like you live, they're my they're my favorite rapper, so I ain't gonna lie, I cried. I cried cause he Rich Homer texted me on Instagram for. So and he was just telling me like, hey, you hard, keep going, you just gotta boost that far, boost your followers and shit like that. And then I I found that that was just somebody I always wanted to work with, so it like damn, I feel like I never get a chance to work with him now, you feel? Me? So yeah. Do you feel like any foul play was involved with what happened to him, or you feel like everything was? Uh, honestly, I don't like. I don't try to. I don't even. You gotta realize, like, we in the world now, where if some tragic happened, the people gonna always say it was. You know what I'm saying? Somebody can. Some can help. You can go somewhere with your homeboys. Some help. Everybody go, oh, he said them up, he said them up, you know what I'm saying? When they don't even really be there, it just be tragedy. Tragedy happens everywhere in the, in the world, normal world and in the entertainment world, so, you feel me? That's true. What is the best, before I get to that question, what at, what rapper passing affected you the most, or was it Rich Homie when, when they passed? It was Rich Homie, it was Rich Homie. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, one person that did he did touch me was Mo Three because yeah. I seen him. I actually met him in the mall when they came down here for the Young Boy concert. I seen him. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, it was like, damn, Mo Three gone. You feel me? So yeah, cause I listened to him. So yeah. and a lot of people compare me to him too. So yeah, I can see that. I I didn't get a chance. I checked him out. Cause I listen to like a lot of older music and stuff, but I checked him out when he passed, and I I was like, damn, I slept on him. I didn't get a chance to appreciate him when he was alive, but I still yeah. go back and listen to all his music to this day. What do you feel is the best rap label of all time? Like the way they organized their business and handled their business and got to the money. I ain't nothing better than being being independent and being your own, creating your own brand and creating your own label. Because at the end of the day, when you when you going to these majors and all that, like, yeah, they gonna help you do what you need to do, but you just gotta like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like the independent is the best way. Independent label is the best way. So I can't just specifically, Push no like which label, but it's a lot of independent labels out here. So you feel me? Gotcha. What era of rap did you grow up in? Like, what did you grow up listening to most of the time? Man, you know we was on that. What we was on? We was on that Soldier Boy around elementary school. Then when I hit middle school, that's when the Chief Key came. Then we got in high school. You know, people was on the future, on the, on the, on the, uh, we was on that rich kids too, back in middle school. Then nigga got on that, 
What was it on? I'm trying, me and my homeboy were just talking about the old music when we was in school. It was a lot of that dancing music, that beef it up and all that, nay nay and all that. Then when I got like 11th, 12th grade, that when the Kodak came and the young boy came and you feel me? Basically like that, like that, yeah. yeah. Do you have any regrets about any decisions you have made in your rap career so far? Any learn lessons you done learned? I mean, it's never no wrong decision because the only way you can learn is to make bad decisions. You feel what I'm saying? So you gonna make bad decisions in the midst of learning. So it ain't never no bad decision. I'm gonna ask you this. So how much do you think being independent that it takes for an artist that's independent to do what they need to do on a monthly basis as far as recording, music videos, content? Oh God, that go back to like you independent ain't being independent ain't easy it ain't easy at all so that's why i went and bought my own studio that's why i went and bought my own camera and my own camera equipment because that's the, that's the, that's that's what you're gonna spend the most money on so you know what i'm saying when you eliminate that cost now you can put money into looking like a rapper you feel what i'm saying so it take money but if you if you really if you really really want it, you'll go above and beyond for it. So that's what I do. I got everything I need. I ain't gotta call nobody. But you feel me? I still uh, go hop in the studio every now and then. You know. Yeah. How much of it is, do you feel is looking like a rapper in today's generation? I feel like the image is is more important now than it used to be. Cause back then you can you can stand on your grandma porch in the tank top, shoot a video and go viral like in 2018, 2016, 2017. But once that, once that COVID came and you got the, you got the scamming niggas up, all these niggas started coming up. These niggas started like, you got, it's, it's the image now. That's, just, that's like now you see boss man D-Lo, first video blowing up. He already got the chain on, you feel me? So, it, 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 it's important. I feel like it's important. Can you make it without doing that? You can. You definitely can. It's a, it's a way for everything. It's a way to make it in every lane, in every which way. So it's like, you know what I'm saying, to each his own. You get what I'm saying? So like, you I, I, you, you see it every day. They getting on their phone in front of their camera rapping and going up. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a way, but I just feel like now people are only going to, you know what I'm saying, engage when they see stuff like that, when they see the diamonds, when they see the cars, when they see the bitches, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that, that kind of plays into what we were just talking about, why it's so much violence and the way the culture is the way it is, because people feel like they got to do whatever they got to do to get that, mm -hmm. and they'll do anything to, to get to it. Yeah, and that's that's the, that's the reason why I make the music that I make. Like you might hear me say a little song, song here and now and then, but it just be for the entertainment purposes. But I always try to push that narrative. Like you can be yourself. You can, you ain't gotta be no street nigga. You, you can be cool and you can still be fly. You ain't gotta have. You feel what I'm saying? Nigga, like that's what I want to push. I want to let niggas know like be yourself, bro. Okay, babe. So we're going to get into some of your music and some of the topics that you you touched on. You said neglect neglect thing turned me into a demon on one of your tracks. Can you explain if somebody don't know what you meant when you said that? Basically, like, and that song ain't out yet, so. But oh, it's coming. <laughs> no, you straight, you straight, you straight, you straight. Because they going to hear it, you feel yeah. what I'm saying? So. I, I I meant like when I say neglect and turn me to a demon, it's on some basically like all the all the fake love and all the fuck shit niggas be on. It just you know what I'm saying. It's just a turn to where it it'll turn you cold hearted. 
You get what I'm saying? It'll, it'll make you not trust nobody, make you not fuck with nobody. So that's what I kind of meant by that, you feel me? Okay, then I wanted to touch on the uh, sad song that you made, because that song really touched me. So can you kind of elaborate for somebody that don't know, because other ethnicities might hear your music and they may not know some of the slang and the lingo. So what did you mean by a danger song, by you grew up in, or came from a danger song? What does that mean? Shit, Birmingham. Like, yeah. shit, it's a danger song. It's a war song. Yeah. Like, shit, you either get with it or stay out the way. Yeah. And that's how I look at it, like, shit. I done been there, like, I, I, chose, I chose the right route. You feel me? I could have went down that road. I done been there, shoot out, so did that. So, you feel me? It's just, it's a danger zone, man. It ain't safe out here. That's real. And then you, you mentioned back door kicking and just other things that we have done that we may not be proud of. So, can you just explain? Cause we in an era where it might be an older white lady that might hear your music and she mm. might vibe to it. If she don't understand why black people do some of the stuff we do or why we're put into a position why we have to, mm -hmm. can you break it down to that older white lady or white man, what's going on in our mind? So I basically, basically I'm gonna break it down like that. So when I make my music, I try to focus more on the struggle, the shit that we, I done been through the shit that I done seen other people went through, like, and I want to know, like, I want to let people know, like, see, we, we here, like, you know what I'm saying? It's people over here, like, we over here, like, and we going through it over here. So, like, when you talk about, like, the politics and stuff like that, like, but we, we the ones suffering from this shit. So, I just try to let people know, like, bro, we, a lot of people don't, they don't move based off just, some people gotta do what they gotta do. To live, to survive, to eat. I done seen it, lights off, sleeping, sleeping in, in the dark. You get what I'm saying? So I just try to focus more on that because I know there's a lot of people that they can relate to that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's more people than with the chains and the cars. That's why you, gain traction doing because like I said it touched me I didn't have anything growing up bro I came from nothing too so like yeah. I said it touched me for sure you said hardest album of the year I said it yeah you said it <laughs> I on one it. of them track <laughs> I know something it definitely gonna be one of those like I, I like no skips because I took my time with it and it's definitely going to be one of those. And as long as I push it the right way, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. I got the faith in it. So, so you got the world's attention for 30 seconds. You're on a major network. Everybody is tuned in to you. What do you say? Do you let them hear a song? Like, how do you, what would you say in that moment? If I got the world attention for 30 seconds. Everybody. I say stop killing each other. That's real. I say, I, I say can y'all please stop killing each other? For Amen. real. All right, before we wrap up, we can, we can touch on a few more topics. Um, so, what do you think we can do as, as a people to improve our financial mindset as far as like the way we handle our finances and some of the decisions we make like to just improve and to get out of some of these situations where we depend on the government for money or is there something we can do? First of all, everybody got to learn how to worry about themselves. Like it be so crazy cause I don't know, you know, you ever heard of an app called Clubhouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. like I hop on Clubhouse and I hear, I hear people going back and forth like, you ain't got no car, or you this, or you, you feel me? Like and at the end of the day, we all struggling. Like we all getting up, going to punch the clock for the white man. So like, I just feel like everybody got to learn how to worry about themselves. 
once everybody started to learn to worry about themselves and, and come together, we could do something. Yeah. But until then, it's gonna keep it's gonna it's gonna go down from generation to generation to generation. Yeah. So so yeah. speak, speaking of generation, is it like any advice that you would pass down to the generation after you, like younger than you, of what they can do to improve their lifestyle or better themselves as people? I just tell them, like, look, whatever you want to be, whatever you're trying to do, you can do it. Don't never let nobody tell you you can't do nothing because it's possible. You know how many times I've been turned down? You know how I many people didn't turn me down? How many features I done, songs I done did with big rappers that never sent them back? You feel me? I ain't feel like, I'd have been turned down, but I never stopped. So whatever you want to do, you can do it. For sure. Is it anything else you wanted to touch on a cover or say to the people? I bet. So. It was a question that, was, that came about, and it said, what happened to the rap scene in Birmingham? It was on Facebook, everybody was sharing it, coming I on. I saw it. So, I just feel like I didn't, I done been around them. I done been around it, it. It really ain't nobody in the city that rap that I ain't either been around, been in the studio with, or didn't have, you know what I'm saying, conversation with. And I just feel like it's too much. It's too much. This, like, and we need to, you know what I'm saying, come together. And it's like, I'm finna, look, I'm finna speak on it, cause I'm, I'm gonna put this on the table. That's just like I had a little situation. I ain't gonna say no names. So I said, hey, bro, um, come from the same side of town. Went to the same school. You know, no, no, no shots thrown and now you know it's all respect. But it's just like I said, hey bro, how how much you want for a feature? Uh give me give me three bands. Like, bro, I'm I'm working a nine to five, bro. You I, you know I can't afford that. Give me something I can afford or give me something I can stack up, you know what I'm saying? It be too much, you know. People think, ain't nobody made it. Nobody has made it. So it be too much, like, everybody want to be that nigga not knowing that it's a puzzle. And if we bring it all together, this shit could be big. And shit, that's, just, that's why you get the rappers that'll go up and then. You feel what I'm saying? Because it, 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 in a certain point of your career, you got changed. When you look at the Kodaks, when you look at the young boy, if you go back and look at 2017, young boy, it's not the same from 2020, young boy. You feel what I'm saying? So when it become time to change, niggas can't, you know what I'm saying? They can't hold it, hold the ball. And when the ball get high, they, it get hard. And that's when everybody else come into play. Okay, bet. Let me go get this nigga, this nigga hard. Let me, you know what I'm saying, bring him out. Let me introduce him to what I got going on so I can stay. But, Niggas just too much dick rhyme. Niggas only want to fuck with you if you popping. They go for the cameraman, the engineers, everybody like y'all be, y'all be thinking y'all, you know, you want to charge a nigga $500 for a beat and you ain't got no hit record. You know what I'm saying? Like I, like I had a situation where I tried to, I tried to make a song with an artist, a female artist from the city. Oh, I charge for features, whoop the whoop. I got a hundred thousand views. You you barely clocking a thousand and you telling me you charging for a feature like and I'm trying to work with you because I'm trying to bring shit together. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm just looking at it like you 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 ahead of yourself. You ain't what what how you gonna charge somebody for a feature and you ain't got a hit song? Mm -hmm. I ain't charging nobody. I got a hundred thousand, I got a hundred K and if a nigga come up to me and be like, hey bro, I wanna you know what I'm saying, nigga, if I ain't doing that, I'll do it for free. If it, especially if we from the same city. Yeah. So that would that it be a they, niggas just be on some. That's why I be in my own line. I fuck with who fuck with me. Yeah. So And it really just holds all of us down when they do stuff like that. The whole exactly. city, bro. So I exactly. definitely understand. Do you think it's anything 
that we can do to change that mentality or just it is what it is? It's going to have to be a whole new way. It's going to have to be a whole new rapper blow up and bring a whole new way, a whole new sound, something different. Because yeah. it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. And it's only going so far. And that's the club. You see what I'm saying? All right. real, man. Where can people uh, check your music out? Where you put your music on? Yeah, well. Yeah. Apple mm. Music, Spotify, all that. Yeah, well. Yeah. Shit get crazy, man. Anything else you want to touch on? The camera's still rolling. <laughs> nah, nah, for real. I feel like I can touch on basically everything I wanted to touch on. Yeah, y'all gonna see more of me, you know. YouTube and I'm doing it all night, like creating content. Then my boy Drip right here, man. You know, he he, you know, trying to keep his head on. He gonna be alright. He do the YouTube and shit too. So, you know, I want anybody you gonna see around me gonna be somebody that's on the same thing I'm on or trying to reach a goal. So, you man. We appreciate your time, bro. Good luck on everything, bro. For sure.